There was no way that I could go the rest of my day without talking about how the Milwaukee Bucks just changed everything with Damian Lillard. Acquiring the man who is known as Dame Time. This is a very massive move in the NBA today, and we're going to talk about it for a couple of different reasons. We're going to talk about how the Trailblazers are impacted. We're going to look at the Phoenix Suns just a little bit, but the first thing I want to show you on your screen are the trade details. The Milwaukee Bucks received Damian Lillard. The Portland Trailblazers received Drew Holiday, DeAndre Ayton, Toramani Camara, Bucks 2029 first round pick, unprotected at that, and swap rights on the Bucks 2028 and 2030 picks. The Phoenix Suns received Yusuf Nurkic, Grayson Allen, Nasir Little, and Keon Johnson. So I'm looking at it from a scope of things. And I, I'm not going to throw the narrative. I'm not going to sit here and act like the Milwaukee Bucks didn't just lose a big time player in Drew Holiday. I think about the guy who was the all-star in that one season with the Philadelphia Sixers. I think about a guy who's an elite on-ball defender who is a first-team all-defense caliber player. And he can also give he can also give you 20 a night on the offensive side. So I'm looking at all of that and I'm saying that is a loss. And it's gonna ding you defensively. But I think the wild card in all of this and that I'm looking at Chris Middleton, a guy who played 33 games last season, but he had a very good showing in the postseason. And he dealt with that injury last year. So you're banking on now being fully a year removed off of that injury. A fully healthy Chris Middleton. We have to remember who this guy is. This is the crunch time player. This is the guy who can hit big time shots, who's a sniper from the three-point line playing alongside of Giannis, and now you have Dame time in the middle of it all. So while I don't think Damian Lillard has the defensive capabilities of a Drew Holiday, let's talk about what he does have. Because Drew Holiday can give you 20 a night, but Damian Lillard can give you 50. Damian Lillard can give you 60. Damian Lillard's going to hit that big time shot on a guy like Paul George when it's not even a good shot. So you're bringing that in and I'm not, I don't even, I don't even want to talk about the name value because we understand what his name is. Everyone knows Damian Lillard and for a good reason. He's been that guy in Portland and he talked about not running from the ground. I don't think that him going to the Milwaukee Bucks, I don't see it as running from the ground because what the Milwaukee Bucks want to do, they see a team who were favored to beat the Miami Heat in the first round last year. And what did they do? Albeit Giannis only played three games, but they lost in they lost in five. So I'm looking at a guy, your best player on the court, played three games, you lose in five. And then when he was on the court, I don't think he was fully healthy. So I'm looking at some of those things that play into it. But you also have to look at the Philadelphia 76ers. They now have Nick Nurse. Is James Harden going to be there? Does he want to be there? Is that the bigger question when we talk about that? But also outside of that, you got a very hungry Boston team. Jason Tatum has been now pushed to us all is the face of the NBA, is the young face, is the guy who's coming up. We can look at John Morant. We can look at Luka Doncic, Trey Young, some of the other guys in the game. But I think Jason Tatum has been pushed the most for what he has done for the Boston Celtics, for the Eastern Conference appearance. He almost came back down 3-0 last year against the Miami Heat. This is a guy who lost in six in the NBA Finals against the Golden State Warriors. The Milwaukee Bucks say, forget all that. We're getting our guy Giannis some help because Giannis is a guy who also has a contract coming up. And that's where things of importance start to come up because I'm hearing these rumblings with L.A. I never thought he would go to L.A., but that's that's something we've heard. And I'm hearing these rumblings with the New York Knicks. I never thought he would go there, but that's something we've heard, though. And you have to think the more we start to hear it and the more it starts to creep up, the, br the Bucks front office is saying that. We're going to get this guy some name value, but beyond that, we're going to get him a star. Damian Lillard is an elite basketball player. This is a top 10 player in the game, a top three player at the point guard position. One of the best shooters of all time. If you look at, you can look at Reggie Miller, you can look at Ray Allen, you can look at Stephen Curry, Klay Thompson. Damian Lillard is in that conversation. Let, let's not act like he isn't. And like I said, even though he didn't quote unquote run from the grind, even though he's played with the Portland Trailblazers and we had, when he had the dynamic duel with him and CJ McCollum, they didn't win anything. But you have to understand that it takes more than him. It takes more than a team. And I think that now this is the best situation and the best position he's ever been put in to win a championship. So I think he's going to be motivated. I think he's going to be determined. I think he's going to be in the best shape of his life. And I think he's going to play the best basketball of his life. Now, like I said, when we step away from it and we look at what we lost for Milwaukee, Grayson Allen is out that door, not coming back. Drew Holiday is out that door, not coming back. So you're going to count on some guys. And I want to talk about a couple guys, really some young guys on this team because you still have a Jay Crowder. That's a guy who's a veteran in the room. And it seems like he went to the Phoenix Suns. They were really good. He went to the Miami Heat. They were really good. He went to the Boston. He went everywhere. And it's like he always goes to a winning team. So is this a guy that's going to be on a winning team? They got Malik Beasley at the guard. And while I don't think much of his defensive capabilities, he's a guy that can shoot the basketball and he's very streaky. So I think the biggest guy and what we're going to count on in stepping up, 
it's really going to be Chris Middleton. Because when I talk about Chris Middleton, this is a guy who is an all-star. Now, last year, of course, he couldn't even qualify for the All-Star game. He only played 33 games. But I think that being that year fully removed off the injury and seeing what I saw in those playoffs, because even though he didn't play a full season, I still think he was the best player once Giannis missed those two games on the team in the playoff in the playoff run. So I'm, I'm thinking about that and I'm saying, OK. And, and when I really looked at Drew Holiday, I thought that he struggled a bit in the round one series versus Miami. But this is not a knock on Drew Holiday. This is just something that I'm saying and I'm looking at that. You know, maybe they felt that Damian Lillard is the thing that's going to take them to the next level. He is that player that Giannis is going to use and they're going to use him offensively. So now, Giannis, you don't have to do so much offensively. Be a defensive monster like you already are. And you can do it two ways. You can go both ways. But I think now, conserving some of that energy and, and not even if you conserve it, you can also do it in stretches. And I think about what we see with some of these big time teams and any big three you can name, we can go to them all in the first quarter. Maybe we start off with a Damian Lillard. He gets hot. Or maybe we even start off with the Giannis. Get him to the basket. Get him a couple easy buckets. We're going to start that off. We're going to get our three point shooters involved, our Brooke Lopez, our Bobby Portis. And then once we get into crunch time, those third and fourth quarters, as things start, as the rubber starts to mute the road a little bit, things start to get a little bit sticky. Now we're looking at Damian Lillard. It's that time. Once it's that time, now I need you to step up. Now I need Giannis to lock in defensively. Okay, get Nikola Jokic. Okay, get Jason Tatum. Okay, get Jalen Brown. Get one of those guys. Okay, get Joel Embiid. We're going to take different types of matchups, and we're going to do it, and we're going to do it at an efficient level. I don't think that... While I think that Drew Holiday is really a better on-the-ball defender, he's a better he's a better individual defender, I think that the system, what they have right there in Milwaukee, I firmly believe that this will still be a good defensive unit. Because, you know, the biggest thing that I thought, even with the Cleveland Cavaliers, just for an example, I thought that, okay, you bring in Donovan Mitchell, but I don't believe he's the best individual defender. But I see that with a Jared Allen, with an Evan Mobley, they had one of the best, I think they had the best defense in all of basketball. So I'm looking at that and I'm saying, okay, I'm seeing how some of these things are starting to work. I really like this move. But when talking about the Portland Trailblazers, though, we talked about the Bucks, some of the things, and I believe this is a move that prompts you right up there. You look at Boston. Okay, I think maybe this is a team that can jump Boston. I look at Philadelphia. I think they have some things going on chemistry wise. And we see that in the playoffs when they had a chance to beat Boston, James Harden and Joy Embiid did a disappearing act like a magician and didn't come back. So I have to expect that. And with the Miami Heat, you can never count the Heat out. Eric Spoelstra, one of the best top three coach in basketball right now. And really in all time, he's starting to creep up on some guys. But Getting to the Trailblazers, though, with Chauncey Billups and the culture he's trying to establish. Now, you draft Scoot Henderson, number two, and I think that they were sold on Scoot Henderson because you do that, and it's a move where, okay, you don't get a Brandon Miller. You didn't trade the pick. So I feel like they're in a situation where they want to develop some of this young elite talent. You still got a Shaden Sharp. You still got an Afrini Simons, but still, I think they want to win. And the reason I say they want to win is you resign a Jeremy Grant. You match a contract where the Dallas Mavericks were almost having their hands on Matisse Thibel. You bring him back. So while I do think they have an influx of guards at the at the backcourt, I still look at it and say, maybe Drew Holiday can be a mentor in this room. And if not, they could still move on from him. He could be a good piece to move because he does have value. A lot of winning teams will want a Drew Holiday. But I think that if he plays, though, you, you could start Afrini. Or maybe you want to keep Afrini at that six-man spot. I think you're paying him way too much money to do something like that. But it's a possibility. Scoot Henderson is going to get his minutes. I don't know what the role in his rookie year is for Scoot Henderson. But I still look at Shaden Sharp. And I still look at Matisse Thibel. He's a guy who can also play the three. But I think he's a, he's a two-guard at heart. So, and different types of things we have to think about and wonder. I think that even with the Phoenix Suns bringing back use of Nurkic, they got Grayson Allen, added some depth without having to spend too much money. That's huge for the Phoenix Suns. I'm going to still hold off some of my takes for them, though. I want to see it because, you know, you're going to have Bradley Bill playing the one a little bit. You're going to have Devin Booker facilitating it a little bit. And I just want to see how it all comes together collectively. And I think that with DeAndre Ayton for the Portland Trailblazers, it's a big time move because I remember the guy that was light footed, that was soft touched at Arizona that can shoot the basketball, that can protect the rim that played with effort that ran up and down the court and you seen him and he was just like a seven foot monster the prototypical big in today's NBA because while he doesn't play like an old time big he has some of those new things but he also has the size like an old time big he's not a six nine guy masquerading as a center so I'm thinking about that and I'm looking at it like this is a guy that is, he screams number one overall pick and he went number one out of Arizona but I, I just don't know and I don't think that Monty Williams was satisfied
satisfy with some of DeAndre Ayton's effort, some of his play at certain times, and really defensively. This is a guy who's supposed to be a defensive monster, but you're seeing him getting dropped by 50. You're seeing 50 points from Giannis Antetokounmpo in the NBA Finals. How do you let that happen? Those different types of things I see. You're fouling out in certain games, but I think that you get a re you get a revigorated and a rejuvenized DeAndre. And once he comes to Portland, I want to see what he does. I like the move for all teams involved. I think that really the only knock that some people will have when talking about this trade in its totality is probably use of Nurkic to the Phoenix Suns because talent wise, you look at DeAndre Ayton and he's everything you want. But on the court, he just has a perform like that. So I'm going to still hold out, and I want to see what Yusuf Nurkic can do for the Phoenix Suns. I look at him. He's not going to block a ton of shots, but he's still a big body under the rim. You have him with the Phoenix Suns. They can run, pick, and roll with him. He can also shoot the basketball a bit. But the biggest thing with Yusuf, he hasn't been healthy. So I just want to see how that plays out. And that's why I say I have not really a question mark, but just kind of that wait and see approach when talking about the Phoenix Suns. But overall, like I said, I think all teams got a little bit better today. I love this for the Milwaukee Bucks. The Blazers, they can do some different things. They can keep these players and try to contend this year, you know, be a fifth to sixth seed. They can try to do that this year. I think they have a lot of young talent. Anthony Simons is looking to take that jump. He's already taken a big time jump, but I think he can jump into that all-star role. He has that type of talent. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Who won the trade the most? You're probably going to the Bucks with Damian Lillard, but who really won the trade the most with some of the picks and some of the assets and some of the depth that we can look at for the Phoenix Suns, a team who doesn't have the most cap space, but adding depth in really subtle ways. So that's going to do it for today's show. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as always. We're coming back with it and I'm ready for this NBA season. It's almost here. And now we out.